girl, 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 please. That's what I've been saying. I told you guys this, but that's what I've been saying when I walk into a room and Frankie's just standing there completely paralyzed looking at me. Girl, <laughs> girl please. Girl, come on. Girl, come on. <laughs> well, Brooke, you don't always have to be a star. I know, but you do if you are going to be in the biggest boy band in the world. I got so worked up that I had thrown up on myself in my stroller. In my 14-year-old self, I said, those are hot men. Men. And look at them now. They're like, <laughs> babies. That was kind of just like a casual interest, mm. which I guess maybe a little bit more than casual. <laughs> Welcome back to Obsessed, you guys. I missed you horribly. Patrick, and, I didn't see I them for you. two weeks, and you didn't see them for quite some time. It's been a minute since I've seen yeah. them. Yeah. Patrick's back today. Thank the heavens. Thank the heavens. Um, I, ha- I was actually drained, so we had to do this from my bed. <laughs> Um, which I know you guys understand. I was originally lying completely down flat, and then we right. decided that um, I should sit. Maybe up. that would be respectful. Yeah, it would be Respect- more respectful. More respectful. But I know you guys wouldn't mind if I was laying down because you understand that I'm drained. But um, <laughs> out of respect, I'm sitting up. So that's just how much I love you guys. Seriously, <laughs> that's so sweet, bro. I know I do. I do love that. And I can't thank you enough for having me back, Patrick. On, like I literally. Wouldn't want anyone else. Brooke, Seriously. If I so could, sweet. you know, if I could lay in bed with someone for the rest right. of my life, it'd be you. And well, I've always you know, said I feel that. the exact same way. Yeah. Um, we're also going to get high in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I got a new binky yesterday. Sure um, this is, a, it's a disposable because I've just decided to go that route because I'm not sure how I've been feeling about my rechargeable binkies right now as they often kind of break so we're trying Wait. the rechargeables right now or the disposables right now which one was your rechargeable the one that you just like pl- plug into the plug oh oh, oh this right. is this like is one like use and you piece. toss i see i see i see which i think could be nice because honestly like a lot of my binkies i just use once and then they break yeah 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 you so, have you haven't had good luck no there's about 16 binkies under my bed <laughs> right <laughs> like, and, it, chewing on right, them. and it's like they'll be there till i move yeah that's fine. the thing Oh, okay. Exciting news. I've got an iPad. So that's kind of like the obsession of this episode, the focal point, if you will. Um, It's purple. And I have our agenda. Let me hold on. It's kind of tough to open. So and give also, me like give me for some time. insight on just like how what we were saying, how like easily convinced you are. Yeah. Our friend Kelly was like, I love doing my crosswords on my iPad showed it on the iPad Brooke immediately <laughs> sold. We're going to the Apple store tomorrow. Yeah. And <laughs> I really am like, it's actually sad one that like how influenced I am to buy things without doing any type of research. Um, and two, like how much joy it does bring me, which right. is like, I wish it didn't. No, but that's a good thing. <laughs> well, the thing is like, it goes away and then you just need to keep doing it. Right. Like remember right, my right. record player? you're always listening to records literally every time i come over you have a record on patrick i know candles lit it is covered in dust Uh um but you guys know when i move it'll just be more accessible for me to use the record player when i move (laughs) it is interesting that like i feel like you're so easily like convinced of things like that but like i feel like i give in to like peer pressure Mm -hmm. so much more than you do like you don't give in to peer pressure i feel like you're so i don't give in to peer pressure in terms of like I don't care if you guys are going out like it's time for me to stay in my bed because that's how much I care about being in my bed. Right. But in other ways, maybe like if everyone's like buying something, I'll buy it like trends and stuff. I just like for me, unfortunately, peer pressure wise, like you can if like a few of our friends are doing, I'll do anything. But I also think like you you want to. Right. right. You know? (laughs) Yeah. I don't know if you'd do something that you genuinely didn't want to do. That's fair. I'm not put in too many positions where I'm feeling right. like pressured to do something right. I don't want to do. When's the last time you felt pressured? Um, when in Europe, when you guys were making me uh, do the Shrek script in a sexy voice. You didn't want to do that. I got I got scared and nervous. And vaca- you guys, you didn't tell me. You didn't tell me you didn't want to do that. No, no, I said I didn't want to do that. No, it doesn't sound like you. No, well, Alexa was pushing me more. I was just getting shy. Yeah. But I, you did such a good job with thank that. Thank you. What we were doing, essentially, you guys know we just got back from Europe. Sorry, I'm now, I know you wanted to talk about this later. I'm No, just, no, okay. I'd love to dive right into that, Patrick. 
Let me actually check the agenda on my iPad really okay. quickly to see if I missed any key details before we head into Europe. Uh, also, let me talk about my hair dressing. I said here. this yesterday, just really quick. The You make the iPad look massive. <laughs> no, it is. It's the 11 inch. Also, wait, should we start smoking? Oh, God, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Rip that up for me now. Let me talk about my near-death experience really quickly yesterday because I want to bring awareness to that. Don't tell me you forgot it already. <laughs> <laughs> Racking my brain. When did you almost die almost yesterday? Died. When did you almost Patrick, die yesterday? you're scaring the shit out of me. I was, it was on your couch. <laughs> Patrick, that's not funny. Wait, 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 wait. Now, hold on, hold on. Now I'm feeling horrible. On my couch, you almost died? Toe. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Brooke. How could I possibly forget? It was tragic. Yeah, I know. Here's what happened. Um, My toe was bothering me. We had just been on a walk to the Grove, which and you guys I, know is my favorite place. If, if one thing, like, when you feel like you're about to die, like, if your toe starts hurting bad, like, that is a horrible sign. I know. It always starts with the toe. I mean, literally, it's like the small things, Patrick. Right. It's always the small things. Right. It's triggering something bigger. Sorry. So, we had been on a walk to the Grove, to the Barnes & Noble, actually, to pay my respects. And that's like a mile walk and my feet were hurting. And I figured I was getting a blister on my toe. So, I wasn't like anxious to check on my toe because I was like, that's fine. I have a blister. Like, I'll handle it later. I know what to do. So, when we got home, I was like, let's check out that blister that's been bothering me for quite some time. Like it had been bothering me for maybe like two hours at that point. Take off my shoe, <laughs> take off my sock. There are hairs wrapped around my toe. Like cutting off, constrictor cutting, cutting off. off the circulation. Toe. Like what, ha what happens to babies? Like you have to check babies' feet all the time in case that's happening to them because which, they can't tell you which, and then they actually, die. Okay, this is what I was going to bring up was you were saying that's how babies die. And I don't know if that's how they die or how they lose a toe. Izzy, do you know? If they die or lose a toe? When they, when they get the hair wrapped around their toe and it cuts off their circulation in their toe. I think it's just like a loss of toe. Perhaps? I could. I, what, long but specific story to short, you, you could have died. I could have died. And it was just, it was, it was sobering. It was, you know, when you have those like close encounters and then. Right. Right. And it then, really makes you feel like grateful for the life you it have. It literally did. And my toe. That's so weird also because we were, this is, this is weird. <laughs> Me and Connor were just watching Moody's Point. What's it, Moody's Point? Did you watch the Amanda show? Yeah. Oh, 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 Moody's oh. Point where the dad lost uh -huh. his toe. Oh my God. I, <laughs> no, that's not like ringing How, I literally manifested losing my toe. Wow. You have to be so careful in that. You way. really do. You really do. For everyone out there with long hair. <laughs> Watch out. How did you? Well, I guess you don't know. I was like, <laughs> I'm I also, confused I how you're wearing socks and, <laughs> and shoes. I don't know and your how hair wraps around. I don't, I don't know how it gets wrapped like that, uh -huh. um, but it does. It's definitely hot, though. Everyone go ahead and it's definitely hot. It's definitely, <laughs> it's hot. definitely hot. Everyone go ahead and check your toes <laughs> for me right now. So anyway, that was the near death experience. <clears throat> that was really scary. OK, I feel ready to head into into Europe. OK, OK. Oh yeah, we've sidebarred from. The, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we had. Trek. Yeah, we put a pin in it. Okay. So Patrick and I went to Europe. Patrick did London and Stockholm with some other friends. Uh -huh. Do you have anything you want to say about that? Because I wasn't there. Um, not too much. Like love, I do love London. Mm -hmm. It like feels like this is so like dumb and American of me, but it like feels like an extension of the U.S. So like in some way. ways, like kind of love it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, London was great. And then Stockholm was beautiful. Very interesting. That's like, we were so confused with like going to the bars and stuff. Like when Alexa and Peter mm -hmm. did not get in to a bar because of being, too drunk. because they were too drunk. And we had come from having each having one glass of wine. And he at, the bouncer was like, how much have you had to drink? And we were like, one glass of wine. And he was like, mm-mm. That is so it was so like weird. bizarre. And that was like several times they asked how much we had to drink before. And it was weird because each time, like we were, usually just like dinner and then the bar after or uh -huh. something and never were like that drunk but they were really running a tight ship over there but other than that super pretty yeah and then we got to paris and then that's where sodi and brooke came into the picture yes me and my friend sodi flew there on norse airlines as you guys know um was it did vacation patrick was he born in paris 
Oh no, he was um, born in Sweden. We didn't go to Sweden. Sorry. Together. <laughs> Wait, Stockholm's oh, oh, in Sweden. Oh, 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 oh. Isn't Stockholm in Sweden? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm thinking Vacation Patrick was born on your arrival, but Vacation no, Patrick he, was. I heard. Born I heard that he came about before I got there. No. Yeah. 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 That is true. Um, I would say Vacation Patrick. Yeah, in Sweden, one morning he mm-hmm. really. It was time. Yeah, how would you describe him? Three words to describe Vacation <laughs> Patrick. Um, Vacation Patrick is God fearing. <laughs> <laughs> he's what? I would think he's the exact opposite. That's he literally didn't give a shit. That's like, exactly, Brooke, because he's so God fearing, and he's bold. And is that why he's like more straight? <laughs> I told you <laughs> how many times do I have to tell you <laughs> Vacation Patrick is down for anyone and anything <laughs> okay, okay okay I know you, you were focused on the straight I know I really so well, different than regular Patrick that, and we'll get to me and Vacation Patrick in a second <laughs> okay God fearing what was the second one um down for anything um God fearing bisexual <laughs> yeah and more, more pan more pan yeah, yeah. that's true god fearing pansexual and um hot hot <laughs> hot, Wait, I mean, hot what like I what say? else can we say so yeah patrick developed like an alter ego mm-hmm. that i had never seen before and i had a pretty big crush on him <laughs> on vacation patrick he was definitely putting out like vibes right i would yeah. say vac- <laughs> vacation patrick kind of like a magnet really no he like literally everyone that passed vacation Patrick was like drawn <laughs> to him there was a raw sexual magnetism I will especially say, with the uh we were we found a fur vest in one of our airbnbs when you that, put that on a vacation Patrick was on forget it and then my lemon bucket hat too and my sunglasses yeah um i will say like vacation patrick is like so fun and everyone is like Fuck. Everyone yeah, loves we, it. We, you lo- guys we love, love Vacation, Vacation Patrick. Patrick. And then Vacation Patrick tends to take it maybe one step too far. Maybe when not did too... you take it one step too far? The ladder? <laughs> I'm just thinking of like, yeah. Maybe, that's not really one step too far, but like I was doing a routine on a ladder I found in the Airbnb <laughs> naturally. <laughs> Vacation Patrick is born to perform. Yes. Then I put the ladder away and pulled <laughs> out a broom and started singing Chim Chimini Chim Chimini from Mary Poppins. And we were and we were trying to rest. They were trying to rest and the girls immediately as soon as I grabbed the broom and started singing were, no <laughs> Patrick Vacation Patrick. Yeah, Vacation Patrick doesn't get tired. That's he, the thing. He doesn't like to be told no. No, he doesn't. But Vacation Patrick would like hold me in a way that this Patrick hasn't before mm-hmm. and I'm like missing him. <laughs> bad that there was, was the sec- closest there was sexual tension literally vacation patrick that's the Brooke. closest i've ever been to like having a boyfriend was vacation <laughs> patrick. patrick yeah are you kind of like grieving the well, loss i'm like feeling like he'll come back he will he will especially like i'm in contact with him and yeah the fourth of july maybe yeah 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 i'm like ad- addicted to vacation patrick like i can't <laughs> even i can't even explain it to you guys and um i hope that you all are as lucky enough to get to meet him one day i do i miss him too yeah um what else happened on the trip that um to circle back to what we were talking about earlier the shrek reading oh yes yes basically we were trying to do which oh my god segues into something else you want to talk about because wasn't that brought up with the cole quinn thing or maybe not yes (laughs) yes start us off okay so when we were in Positano. Oh, maybe we could talk a little bit about Positano too, because I feel like you have some my doms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked about my doms a lot on Broken Connor, but I can do uh-huh. a quick um, debrief of my diagnosis. Um, we were doing. Alexa had pulled a, bit, a transcript from mm-hmm. Shrek, and we were doing um, basically the equivalent of like a Quinn, like what do you even call that? Like, and Quinn is an audio erotica audio app, if you don't know audio erotica, Thank like just like that. erotica, like reading it, uh-huh. like breath breathily. And Vacation Patrick got a little sidetracked and didn't feel comfortable doing audio I didn't know erotica. he didn't feel comfortable doing audio erotica. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe I did. <laughs> but sometimes it's important to push yourself. It is. It really things. is. It really is. Do you is. feel like you regret it or do you feel like you grew from it? Um, I feel like I grew from it. But in a way, regret it, you know? What was the uh, passage that you read? It was something about... 
wasn't it Donkey and the Dragon? No, I think that was mine. Oh, it was the same. It was the same. Oh, okay. Because I didn't get too far into it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. What was I saying? Positano, Doms. No, Quid, after that, Quinn. Quinn. Oh, I was talking about your comfort zone. Your comfort zone is made up of three parts. Oh, wow. Here we go. The inner part is like your is your comfort zone. Okay. 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 Then the outer layer is like things that are outside of your comfort zone in a good way. So you need to like push yourself. Okay. And then the third layer is things that are out of your comfort zone in a, in a way that it's out of your comfort zone and you're not going there because you have you're respecting your boundaries. Like something like crazy bad for you or no something it would just be like in therapy i would be like that's out of my comfort zone like third ring like it's not it's not happening like it wouldn't even help me right now it's too much oh i see i thought <laughs> like <laughs> jumping off a bridge no, well like i thought you were saying like i was picturing like a lower tier as in like oh like i'm staying in bed all day like that should be out of my comfort zone because it's not good for me but that makes no sense it's not important <laughs> No, that's on me. You Actually, explained that important. clearly. No, I don't think I did. No, you did. That was on me for not understanding. No, Patrick, it's never on you. Is there a way to keep my iPad open? I think, yeah, you have to like adjust the auto off thing. <clears throat> do you know how to do that? Mm -hmm. Pop on over to your settings yeah. for me real quick. Heading to my settings. Okay, why don't we go to display and brightness? That could be a good place to start. Or like someone who like works on their phone all the time. Like I don't know how to work. And why don't we auto go ahead lock. and auto, auto lock? lock. And never. do never. Yup. Love that, Patrick. Thank you. Of course. Okay, back to good notes. Okay, we've discussed my iPad, my near-death experience. I really quickly want to touch on Brittany and Cole Sprouse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that came out today. Today is <clears throat> May something, whenever that came out. For those of you that don't know, Brittany did an episode of her show, Royal Court, with Cole Sprouse. I had the honor and the privilege of going to that venue piece that and like crazy. watching that from the sidelines it, it it really was one of the best days of my life the chemistry between Brittany broski and cole, cole sprouse, sprouse is off the charts That's like amazing. can you imagine having like insane chemistry and like an awesome like piece of content with like one of your celebrity crushes right right I, love I wish girl. I could have witnessed it. Oh my God, Patrick. It was remarkable. And he was so fun. He like matched I her energy that. so well. Oh um, yeah. You were and he said her, got she read him her fan fiction and he said it made him horny. Like, can you imagine? Oh my God. Brittany Broski made Cole Sprouse horny. Yep. Wow. I wonder how often Brittany thinks about that. I, I, I told her like I would do it every day. Right. Every day. <laughs> right. That would never leave me. Um, but I asked her today if I could say one thing or if she thinks I would get a restraining order. <laughs> and she said that I could open up about it if I okay. choose. So I'm, I'm going to choose to open up about it. Oh, wait, what are you about to say? And we and if and if we feel that we want to take it back. OK, that's could, always an option. We can always take it back. Um, they did a bit on the show with Danimals because remember Cole and Dylan did that like Danimals sweet yeah, 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 of course. So Brittany brought him Danimals and you know, he drank his Danimals. All is said and done. And I noticed that when Cole left no, what? No. What? What's wrong? <laughs> I just like have a guess as to where this is going. He had left his empty Danimals bottle just sitting there. And so obviously my thought goes to is this something I'm going to take home with me? And I decide, you know what? No, like you're, you don't, mm. you don't need to be doing this right now. And then I watch someone throw it out. And then I said, mm, that's not, uh, or, that's not sitting right. I had to take it out of the trash can. <laughs> then what did you do with it? It's in my kitchen. It's been, in, <laughs> it's been in my kitchen for three months. That's really beautiful. I mean, to that have a, bottle of danimals that cole sprouse drank out of when the danimal sweepstakes right shape okay. the nation that's so like it's like an artifact it's an artifact well i thought i think he would he loves artifacts i thought that he was literally is an archaeologist where like you like licked, licked it, it. no nah. across your mind i wouldn't no. do that <laughs> doesn't sound like me no god no but yeah it's in my kitchen i literally like i genuinely like i, I think he'd get it yeah 
No, for sure. Especially with how he like was so um, responsive to the fan fiction about him and the coming back from the Gulf War changed man. Was that Britney's? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. From the Gulf By the War. way, I had, again, the honor and privilege to read that. Beautiful. That girl. There's oh. nothing she can't do. Nothing. Like, I can't even imagine. I haven't even thought about that before. I can't even imagine what a beautiful writer she is. I'm, I, I was in tears at what had happened, Nicole. She is literally. After like, the war. The most talented. Her voice. Her humor. Her, everything like, about her personality. Right. Makes every single person feel so special. Yep. Her, like, her comedic timing. Her writing her po- ability. Her podcast in oh, the room by herself. Brilliant. Like, her podcast in the room by herself. I've never seen anything like no, it. No. I, like, her. can't say enough good things about her. Hi, guys. I want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, ZocDoc. Are you that one friend in the friend group who loves to treat yourself? Yup. You know, you get a pedicure and opt for the extra 10 minute foot massage with green tea infused lotion? Yup. Yep. Or refuse to make coffee at home because that fancy coffee shop is right downstairs? Yup. Yep. Well, if you treat yourself to the top options with everything in life, why settle when finding a doctor? It is your health after all. Enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book tens of thousands of top tier doctors all with verified patient reviews. So don't settle. Go for the best and find the right doctor for you. With ZocDoc, you've got more options than you know. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Once you find the doctor you want, you can book them immediately. And these docs all have verified reviews from real patients. We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top-rated, patient-reviewed, credible doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat basically any condition you're searching for. The typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 and 72 hours. You can even score same-day appointments. If I need an appointment, I'd use ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com obsessed and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash obsessed. ZocDoc dot com slash obsessed. Hey guys, I want to take a quick break to thank one of today's sponsors, Blissy. And by the way, guys, this is my Blissy pillowcase right here on my tissue pillow. Who knew that a better pillowcase is all you need for better sleep? Let's talk about practicing self-care while you sleep. Set yourself up with better sleep with Blissy's award-winning 100% mulberry silk pillowcases seriously silk is what's best for your hair and skin it reduces frizz tangles and prevents breakage that's because it keeps the moisture in your hair and keeps your skincare products and natural moisture on your skin while cotton absorbs it off your face say goodbye to wrinkles dry flaky and red skin in the morning and wake up with healthier and shinier hair there's a lot of dupes out there that claim satin can be an alternative to silk but silk is more breathable and gentle Silk is also more durable and long lasting and Blissey pillowcases are machine washable and hypoallergenic. I get such a good night's sleep with my Blissey pillowcase. I get to take care of my skin and hair in my sleep without even thinking about it. It's also super cute, which you guys can see clearly right here and pretty luxurious. Everybody loves them, yay. They have a ton of different prints and colors and they make great gifts because there's an option for literally anyone. Men love them too. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. They have over 1 million raving fans and you could be next. Try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissy.com slash obsessed pod and get an additional 30% off. That's blissy.com slash obsessed pod and use code obsessed pod to get an additional 30% off. Your skin and hair will thank you. Okay, are are you feeling high at all? Not really, a smidgen. Um, The only time I felt high was when I thought your lower comfort zone was being negative. I'm not feeling affected by my binky yet, but... Um, let's talk about any high experiences that we've had that are of note. Okay. You go first, unless you want me to go first. Why don't you go first? Cause I'm trying to think of. I could just like, involved you guys us. know the classic green Hornet mm-hmm. experience, which is why I can no longer do gummies unless I'm in my own bed. I used, oh. it used to be. Where I could like pop gummies out at a bar and like be having the best time. Mm, I could never even fathom doing something like that now. Basically what had happened for those of you that that, um, haven't heard this, I'll just breeze through it. Patrick and I were obsessed with these 
gummies called Bliss. And they were like sweet little pink gummies, five milligrams. We'd pop one or if we were feeling crazy, like one and a half or two, put on some TV, like have the best like giggly movie yeah. nights, like truly like some of the best nights of right, my life right. on those Bliss gummies. Oh God, yeah. Then discontinued. That When, when we found out on Sweet Flower or whatever it was that Bliss was no longer there, it was horrible. I, I had actually DM'd dosist which is oh, the really? company yeah they discontinued like it actually like gives me shivers to think about what <laughs> they did so we went with a brand called green hornet mm-hmm. which is like a little bit different I think than green Blitz. hornet even was in like was like tristan got in a pr, like package, PR package or something. something we just stumbled upon green hornet yeah and it was like a 10 milligram one instead of the bliss was five and, and green we, apple yeah green apple well. and we were like we'll just take the whole thing like it's all good watching some sort of like gory movie old. old and there was a scene where like someone reached his hand in into someone's body and like a surgery maneuver I felt gory. i felt i'm not kidding felt the hand in my in my system mm-hmm. <laughs> had to uh use the restroom and throw up and shit myself and were- faint unconscious for like literally a half hour <laughs> doing double dragoning as they yeah. say and then it, well, puking into the trash can you, like i literally patrick had re- completely resigned myself to death all i was you all i was, was thinking over. like i literally was like That's it's over worst. it's fine i just like i hate that patrick and cat have to find me in here right that was my only concern it is like crazy because like when that happens to you like when you get too high like you it is not like a game like is it over is it not yeah it's like this is the end this is the end and it's also crazy how like because i still get some panic attacks sometimes like never as bad as that but like you'd think like once you have one like you could just be like, oh, this has happened here before. before. Yeah, it's yeah. like uh-uh. you're always fine. No. But I'll never forget Brooke. And like we're still watching the movie. Like we think Brooke <laughs> just kind of like went to the bathroom and then she's been in there a long time. And then she comes <laughs> out holding my trash can and says, Patrick, I need to throw this away. I'll buy you a new one. <laughs> like no possible way. It was cleanable. Anything like whatever happened in that bathroom, no one will know except for like you and the Lord. Like... <laughs> It literally was in like you were in there for so long, emerged needing to throw out a trash can. L- literally, and you like, threw it out and bought it, me a new it, one. It, yeah, it could not be saved. <laughs> and I have not been able to eat salt and straw, salted malted um, ice cream since. Which that reminds me too, because like when Brooke does get high, she like you have to. We have to be careful with like certain scenes yeah. in movies, goriness, whatever. Yeah. One time, Brooke uh, and I oh were really God. high watching oh Normal God. Heart, I, which is I the Ryan I think I told Murphy. you guys about that. Oh, did you tell them? I think so, but it's the, you say it, you tell them. Just this heartbreaking, beautiful movie, but like a heartbreaking movie about like the AIDS epidemic and this like group of gay friends that are like going through it. Basically. Starring Matt Bomer, Mark Ruffalo, Jonathan Groff, uh, Ben Wittrock. Literally, like, all of, like, a lot of Ryan Murphy, like, classic mm-hmm. players. And at one point, the... I can't. Don't, don't even say it. Don't say it. Okay. <laughs> but basically that, it, it's a very, it's like a tough movie to watch. So beautiful. Mm-hmm. But if you have, like, any sort of health anxiety, not a good watch. I, that's the first time I've ever had to, I was like, we we actually have to stop watching the movie right now. Right. We did a pause mm-hmm. in recovery. And then by the end, we were gasping for air sobbing so hard that's the hardest i've ever cried in a, okay, I think a movie we, I think. we even talked about this when i was on probably before. i don't know that's the hardest i ever cried in a movie with you and also i was in this one alone more so um but you know breathe <laughs> starring andrew garfield as robin yeah. cavendish the okay. first respironaut to leave um the iron lung at the hospital <laughs> i don't know hate to the breathe movie because you were so moved by it and but you know exactly what I'm going to say. Like that movie, like I love to cry in a movie. I really yeah. do. But sometimes there are movies that are just like beautiful and they make you cry. Sometimes there are movies that are just like trying to make you cry. That's a real story, Patrick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying when he is put on the iron lung in the first 10 minutes of the movie, I was like, oh my God. Well, because the movie is not about him getting sick. It's about what he did after. Wow. <laughs> wow, bro. I mean, that's true. That yeah. is true. It yeah. just like, it was like constant, like so sad after so sad. Well, Patrick, after so that's sad. just life. Right. 
Sucks right. his life. That's true. Anyway, if you guys want like a fun night in, go ahead and watch the normal heart. Into and breathe. just breathe. Oh, not, not it's just, just breathe. breathe. It's just, it, it's <laughs> breathe, period. <laughs> Is this thing on? I think so. That's always a dangerous game you start playing. <laughs> Is it oh, on? Is it on? <gasps> <laughs> yep. I think that's the only that horrible high story. Like I've had like some like bland panic right. attacks. But the best night ever was when we were still having oh access to bliss. And Patrick, there was a period of time where he had a um, mattress on the floor where I could lay. I was laying in the mattress, com- so comfy. He was uh-huh. on the couch, and we watched. I'm big, like the way you like set that up here, this mattress on the floor. Like, like they're picturing this like shit all apart. No, go- oh my god, gorgeous, gorgeous apartment mattress. You wouldn't the, believe and it, and you wouldn't believe down probably <laughs> down premium feathering. Yeah, silk sheets. Yep, it's blissy, if you will. <laughs> um, and we watched in this order. Actually, I don't remember the order. Mm-mm. Little Miss Sunshine, which like so good, knocked it out of the park. I don't know if like I had not seen that in a while. If yeah. I'd seen it. Um, my best friend's wedding, which I had not seen. <laughs> my best friend's wedding. <laughs> my best friend's wedding. <laughs> my best friend's wedding. <laughs> that was supposed to be Irish, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> my best friend's wedding is one of my favorite movies of all time. It is so good, and it is. I feel like sometimes when I show it to people, I'm acting like it's like this, like <laughs> like under Oscar, like worthy. <laughs> it's like literally such a famous movie. Whenever I show it to people, <laughs> but like. They don't like, like not everyone They're loves Julia Roberts' character because you're right. like made to question right. her. Right, right. Morley, her, Morley yeah. Gray. Right. Anyway. Oh no, I loved it and I was really affected by it. By one specific. And there, yeah, <laughs> this is actually really stunning because wasn't Dermot Mulroney one of your uh, like, yeah, early crushes? I think Dermot Mulroney's so hot. Yeah, yeah. And there's this scene, and when, I, when I'm high, like everything, like I'm, um, the, the emotions are just amplified mm-hmm. by 50. So there's this scene. What if he like sucks the ring off her finger or something? Yeah, I think so. And I, I was high. So I was like, like, I, I've like never seen it. I like literally it was like something busted open in my brain. And I was well, like, and- that, is, that is a level of intimacy I've never reached <laughs> before. <laughs> well, and I will say like, even though we were high, like in the movie, it like does kind of come out of left field because it's like yeah, it was tight, totally like tight shot yep. of her hand and him just like fully like sucking her finger. It came out of and it was it was. <laughs> I, I, I'll never forget it. Really, really sticks with you, mm-hmm, especially really coming does. from Dermot Mul- Mulroney. Yeah, he's one of those people. Just like learn his name because he's in everything uh-huh. and like no one knows his name. Right, Dermot Mulroney. What a cutie. Hmm. He's in, um, you okay? (laughs) Friends. He's in Dirty Grandpa. He's in Dirty Grandpa? Yeah, he's Zach Efron's dad. He's literally literally in everything. I can't think of one thing he's not in. Right. I just can't think of any other project. No, not right now. (laughs) But we're always watching him. Literally always watching. I think that, and then we watched this movie called The Gift with Jason Bateman, which was like hot, went high feeling so spooky who was the stalker man in that patrick let me look it up on my ipad oh my was god that, i've got it down that wasn't IMDb. sebastian stan was no it? that was uh flesh oh. or fresh where's my oh the <laughs> got your strands open that was i honestly think it's someone we don't know um let's right go to where's imdb okay oh my god it's from two the year 2000 oh i did not think it was that old me neither it looked like pretty this isn't it is it Nah. wait is it no this is no because it. it's jason bateman right no but th- i'm not seeing jason bateman right now. oh yeah that's a different oh 2015 that makes more sense <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. From 2000. the stalker is joel edgerton Edgar, I, I, he is kind of looking familiar. I don't think he was in Boy Erased, which I don't remember seeing him in that, and The Great Gatsby. I don't remember seeing him in that, and The Boys in the Boat, which I've never seen. But he's he's definitely in stuff. Yeah. But that was so creepy, and it was just like the perfect trio of high movies and just like right 
I love really that mattress. Kind of genre. Yeah. Any other high stories? Uh, 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 I don't know. We like, I feel like we have a no, million. Fine, we can move on. Okay. I've got so much to talk about. Okay. I'm feeling so high. <laughs> <laughs> the last one hit you when you said, mm-hmm. is this when working? I said, is, this, is this thing on? Yep. 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 Here's, sure the, here's the it thing. Sure yep. <laughs> <laughs> it was I definitely on. Catch up. It's definitely on. Let's talk about Bridgerton. You've never seen it? <laughs> <laughs> I know something perfect we can talk about. Bridgerton. Have you seen that? <laughs> no. Never seen it. But this oh, is Oh, Patrick. Oh, that was a funny high moment. Oh, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> that is a funny high moment. Tell them, Patrick. Okay, tell okay. them. Brooke was on high on my couch and was like Patrick, do you, she went through a seaweed phase. Like your high snack yeah. was those like seaweed teriyaki. The like not like the chit like the squares from Trader squares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like, you could get them anywhere though. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, do you have the Trader Joe's seaweed chips? And I'm in the kitchen. I go, yeah, I sure do. And then from the couch, I oh, like, Patrick. like let out and completely like I wasn't trying to do a bit. Like it was. Like, so earnest like the most sexual like moan. moan oh patrick like <laughs> like so earnestly because that's like and, how that's how much right. my body was cr- needing it like really like, came yeah hard yeah that was beautiful. yeah so sometimes we'll say oh patrick <laughs> in memorandum you and alexa do love to do that one we do <laughs> but what were we talking about <laughs> oh yeah, yeah sorry i, I kind of have like a little bit of a short attention span that's fine or excuse me, around. not that short-term memory. Oh, right, loss. Right, right. Oh my God, what were we talking about? Bridget. Bridget. <laughs> um, you haven't seen it, <laughs> so that's perfect. Let's talk about it. Oh, you guys, I just love Bridgerton. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing that I always say about Britney's podcast. It's like she can talk about something that she likes in the most like insane detail like so well thought out like full analysis like hours hours long i i don't you i you guys know i have a lot of passion and love for things but like when speaking about it it's just like i love it (laughs) oh you guys i love that all right moving on i love bridgerton you guys (laughs) and she just did a full episode on it i like what is what much is what much else is there to say right Maybe you could it. do you can do your breakdown of I'll your feelings you, yeah, of Jonathan Luke. Yeah, Luke. I can do that. First season, um, the Duke played by how would you pronounce the name? Reg 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 Reg, 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 Reg Reg You guys you know the one, Jean Jean Paul. Uh oh no. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me look it up, you guys. Do I have Siri? I feel like I'm being so annoying. No, <laughs> I was going to talk about this too. Is lately, Brooke and I have been, if we get high, it's like immediately after like, oh my God, I thought it was so annoying. We're like, was I so insane? And it'll be like the most normal thing ever. Like, was I so insane? Like literally last night at dinner, oh, Brett uh, was asking Brooke questions. And then afterwards, she literally apologized. She's like, sorry if I was being absolutely insane. We we're like, Brett was literally asking you questions and you answered. There was well, I was like, sorry to it. make this all about myself. <laughs> right? Like, No, you weren't being insane. You were being normal. I don't know. I just feel like I'm being a freak. I also saw a video of me on. Oh, you showed me that. It's like being um, interviewed. S- sorry, that's also feeling weird. It's feeling disrespectful. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it was just the a podcast yeah. that you and Connor. And I were. was like, oh my god, oh my god. Like, see, I-, I was being so annoying. So, just know that I'm feeling hyper aware of that. I think it's reg. It's not maybe red. Jean Page. Let's call him RJ RJP for now. Let's do RJP. <laughs> RJP. So uh, he was in the first season with Daphne and Patrick. There's different tropes for every season. Do you know what a trope is? Oh, yes. Yeah. When you said, see, now this is my high brain coming in. Yep. I'm so used to you talking about Akatar yep. that when you said trope, I was in my head. I go, I was doing, okay, tropes, high courts, tropes, high, like they're the same. Like trope within Bridgerton is the high court. Patrick. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? 
A trope is like a, a theme. <laughs> no, no, I know that. I know that. I got there. I'm just saying that's where my head went first. To the night court? <laughs> Thinking that the night court of Akatar was the trope. for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you do. You do. Is he's reading Akatar, you guys? How far are you? Chapter 16. She's on chapter 16. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Patrick. I'm being so rude. <laughs> no, I'm just laughing thinking about right before that we were going and we're always like, are we being insane? <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, you're not. And then I went on that whole thing and you're like, what the fuck are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> the hell? We, we will have to come back to that because I still am not following your thought process. Somebody out there will follow but it. But Izzy, can you come here for a second? Sorry to make you get up. It, no, over like over there in front of the camera, like under my bed a little. <laughs> There's a bag. <gasps> what the f- it was like, obviously, like you needed. You needed. The, and it was Izzy's birthday. Thank you, oh, my God, Izzy. I just love Happy you birthday, so much. Izzy. And I hope you're belated. I hope that. Oh, yeah, I'll give you a hug after. But I hope that um, and I know that you will love them as much as I do. And I can't wait to discuss with you. I left dinner early last night to go read it. Oh, my God. How are, you're still you're still on chapter 16. I'm like six pages in chapter. OK. I had to go to bed. OK, I'm going to. Mm. Wait, also, I feel like we haven't said what <laughs> what the <laughs> gift is. <laughs> like, I think it's assumed, but take it it's away. Just the, the rest of the Akatar books. Um <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just not going to say anything. I was going to say, like, I'm going to, f- like, flag, like, a page to you that I want you to pay, like, extra special crucial attention to and just kind of memorize every word of this page. But I'll, I'm just going to I'm just going to let go and like God, because that is really <laughs> that's really the best way for for someone to go into it. But I'm so excited. <laughs> now, back to you, Patrick. OK, well, we're I'm not going to try okay. to explain okay. that again, but tropes. So basically each season has a different trope. Mm-hmm. And season one is Daphne, the eldest girl, Bridgerton, and um, the Duke, who's like okay. in town visiting. And basically Daphne is like the diamond of the season. So like the queen is like, she's my most prized, like my prized possession because she, all the all the boys are going to want to marry her. Right. Okay. And, the big and if I endorse her, that's like a win for me. Okay. She's the belle of the ball. Right, 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 right. Okay. But then basically, like, I forget what happened, but, like, something happened where, like, guy, they lost interest in her. And so then they did the f- fake dating, her and the Duke, because he was like, I want attention off of me. And this is perfect because it mm-hmm. gets people to, like... Classic trope. Like you, like, be into you again because you're with me. And so it was turned fake dating to real dating. Love it. Quote of that season, I burn for you. Wow. He was burning for her. And as someone who has never watched Bridgerton, that is like, I do remember the like chokehold that RJP yep. kind of had on yep. everyone. But then Patrick, okay. he obviously left the Bridgerton franchise. I assume because he was th- like wanting to go on to a quote, bigger and better things, right. unquote, as if something could be bigger right. and better than Bridgerton. Um, and we haven't seen him in anything since. So, so <laughs> speaking of say. Jonathan Bailey, he didn't do that. And look at him now. Mm-hmm. So like, true. literally like probably one of the most popular actors right now. And he's still he in really Bridgerton. Is. Season two is his season. Oh, he's the focus of season mm-hmm. two. He's the Viscount. He's, uh, Daphne's older brother. He's the eldest son. Okay. So he has taken the role of Viscount after and his father Viscount passed meaning... by being stung by a bee. I actually don't know what Viscount Wait, his, his father passed? Stung by a bee. Okay. Yeah, so that's a trigger for him in, in season two. He does not like bees. No. Okay. Especially if they're swarming around someone that he loves. That happened often. It was actually like one of the most breathtaking scenes of, of anything. Spoiler alert for season two, but also like it's not really a spoiler because I feel like that kind of thing doesn't really have spoilers. But if you just want to know nothing about season two. Um his yeah, his dad died by getting stung by a bee because they didn't have like epipens uh-huh. or anything to back in the days of yore, and um, <laughs> a bee started swarming around his like enemy, but soon to be oh. lover, and he literally like the thought of losing her, like he From was like bees. he was like panicking beyond belief. Mm-hmm. One because of the bee, but also because of what it would what it would mean should should the bee sting her. Right, and she had to. They did breathing together. And that was kind of a, the first like big tender moment 
kind of leading the enemies to lovers. Now, did his father have uh, some sort of pre-existing condition that a bee sting would have taken him out? I think an, a severe bee allergy. Okay. Yeah, okay. was the implication. <laughs> okay. But he, di- he did, like, I don't know how bee allergies work, but he died, like, bee sting to, like, literally stung, drop dead. That would, which is, like, that's really a horrible scary. way to go. Yeah, which is really scary. But... I would definitely have a fear of bees too. Right. right. Should that have happened. That. Right. Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Apostrophe. It's getting warmer and summer is just around the corner. I'm so ready to hit the beach and plan a few fun trips with my friends. If you're looking to get your skin glowing in time for summer, it's time to get started with Apostrophe. Apostrophe's goal is to help you feel confident in your own skin. Whether you're dealing with breakouts, signs of aging, or acne scarring, Apostrophe will help you love the skin you're in. Apostrophe is an online platform that connects you with an expert dermatology team to get customized acne treatment for your unique skin. Through Apostrophe, you can get access to oral and topical medications that use clinically proven ingredients to help clear acne. Simply fill out an online consultation about your skin goals and medical history. Then take a few selfies and a dermatology provider will create a customized treatment plan just for you. Apostrophe offers access to prescription treatments for all types of acne, from hormonal acne to facial acne, and even back, chest, and butt acne. For example, I have all of those things. Um, So thank you to Apostrophe for being able and willing to go into all of those spaces to help me get the clear skin that I want and deserve. We have a great deal for our audience. Get your first visit for only $5 at apostrophe.com slash OWB when you use our code OWB. That's a savings of $15. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash OWB and click get started. Then use our code OWB at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. Thank you, Apostrophe, for sponsoring this episode. And then basically, he just wants to have a marriage of convenience. So he like picks this girl, but he has to like go through her older sister first kind of thing Uh to get approval. And obviously him and the older sister are much more compatible. Oh, her older sister. Yes, not him. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And now season three is what's happening right now. Like, I'm sorry, this this is not my season. Like, this is not the yeah. couple that I care most about. This is Colin Bridgerton, one of the other Bridgerton brothers, who, like, I can't I can't find myself to okay. give a shit right now. Yeah. Um, but, like, obviously I still, like, enjoy the show and, like, love watching, but, like, Colin's not my brother. And honestly, like even Jonathan Bailey's Anthony is not my brother. Benedict, you know, Benedict is my brother. Wait, <laughs> walk me through what's confusing you right now. I think um, I got lost on you starting to call them brother, your brother. <laughs> oh, the three of them are brothers. <laughs> yes. Did you think I was just like my brother? My brother. <laughs> my brother, John- Jonathan B. <laughs> no, those are the three brothers that are okay. the elder that brothers. Makes more sense. Benedict, who oh, so season- Jonathan B is not really even your brother. Benedict is this is my hands. I'm pointing at my hands for Kindle right now. I I didn't start it yet, but I'm about to read his Bridgerton book, which is book three. But they went in a different route for the, for the series. Show. Like okay. for whatever reason, season three is not his, at which it should have been. Benedict is literally like has been the one I have admired from afar from season one because he doesn't really mm-hmm. he doesn't have like a huge storyline but like he's always kind of like just like in the crass slipping through the cracks right right and I can't help but love him what time period is Bridgerton's yep. supposed to be yep okay <laughs> yeah. I would say 1800s like Victorian we're actually like if that's wrong like I'll feel too stupid and we'll have to cut it well I was about to say while we were 1800s is that Victorian what's the rest I was about to say Ren- it, well, Re- Regency, totally Regency. Renaissance was earlier, medieval. T- I think that was like 15, God, 16, 16 when so was Ren- bad with dates. 1400, 1400 to 1650. Thinking, I li- you could have told me that the Renaissance it was like 19s. No, like 18 or 1700s. I'm, I'm horrible with dates. And not. I just thought the Renaissance was like happening in... I should stop. No, keep going. I was going to say, <laughs> I just looked like the Renaissance was like 17, 1800s, but like happening in Europe. It was like the Renaissance. It was period. happening in Europe. 
Right. So that's why I was like, oh, oh it, it oh, could have been 1700s oh. and just like not you're in kind the, of like older fat. Yeah. Happening. Yeah. I understand that, Patrick. I do understand that. Um, okay. But Benedict's always kind of just been in the sides. I admired him. And I actually have never spoken about this because I know people have like really strong feelings about the book, A Little Life, like some strong negative feelings. So I've just like been like, ah, I'm not going to talk about that right now, but I'll talk about it right now. That I read that when it came out and like, me too. You too, Patrick. I came out when I was in college. Sorry, I'm looking at Frankie eating a, a cord right now through uh, in the mirror. Oh, I see you're in the Yeah. Um, it came out when I was in college and it like wasn't popular and it was just in the like new section of um, the bookstore. And so I read it and I was very affected by it um, just due to it's like it's truly like the most devastating piece of literature that's out there, which is why some people don't like it because like it's it is just like devastating for the sake of being devastating. Um, and I was like so deeply moved by that, have carried that with me for a very long time. Um, news to me, they are doing a play on the West End in London, and this is last year. So that's why I went to Europe last year to go see that play. Right. And then I kind of just built the rest of that Europe trip around seeing a little life. Guess who played Willem? Guess whose wiener you saw? Willems, right. yeah, but there was full, there was full frontal. There I was, was like, wait, there was full frontal. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Um, yeah, Luke Thompson, who plays Benedict in Bridgerton, also played Willem, if that means anything to you, in A Little Life, and that was I saw that a year ago, and that's what kind of really propelled me to, to him even to further. Thompson. So his season is, I'll literally have to watch it from a padded cell oh he hasn't had his yet. season has not happened okay. yet and i'm scared like i'm scared they won't even do it next because like they really are not giving him much i mean who, but who else would there be there's uh, eloise oh uh, and there's francesca okay who they're giving more of an opportunity to shine this season okay but I mean, but he's got a little bit, but it's it's not it's not enough. Right, it's not enough. But maybe that's like you know they're bringing him out mm -hmm. and then they're gonna swoop him in for the next. So season. I had never mentioned Luke Thompson because that was a crush I was keeping personally because mm -hmm. I had convinced myself that that will happen. Right, and like when it happens, I don't want him to know that I like talked about him right. on my podcast. Right, I'm ready to say I'm ready to come to terms with the fact that maybe that won't happen, so I can talk you about can come him forward now because I did find out he was I was talking about like a while ago. I'm, Brooke and Connor, how I was devastated that one of my crushes had a girlfriend, but I wouldn't say it was him. He does actually has had a girlfriend for quite some time. Okay. So that's tough. We're, yeah, we actually are not, can't be together right now. Right now. Right now. Right Just now. right now. Yeah. So, and so I think that's, that's all I have to say about Bridgerton. Bridgerton. Have you talked about Baby Reindeer at all? I don't know. You, watched, you watch it? Yeah, I've seen it all. Oh my God. Have you watched when it all? You got back from Europe? Yeah, I watched yeah, it. Yeah, I watched it in like two days. Oh my god, what'd you think? Like insane. I'm fascinated by her. Insane. Fascinated by did her. You, did you see her on yeah. Piers Morgan? Like ne what no one has ever like looked so obvious that they are lying. Like her she's, tweets and she's everything. Saying, yeah. Answering questions differently every time. And she's so like quick and so defensive. Like and any like tweet or statement she's come out with is the exact same format of all of Martha's communications. I'm also just like fascinated by stalking like in, in like, what uh, way? And like and that I love like crime docs and stuff like that. Yeah. Like just like stalking is such like an interesting mindset. It to, is. You're like psychologically to like get to. Because I feel like we use the term stalking so casually. Right. Right. But when you really kind of sink into the mindset, it is scary, obviously. Right. Right. And also too, just like in the show of him, like being so human about it and like almost liking it sometimes. Yeah, uh, that was so honest. That is crazy. And, like, and the fact that I that's him. the guy. Yeah. That oh, got literally him. Yeah. The fourth episode, like I literally almost couldn't watch. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That like was, that was a, if I was high, yeah. that wouldn't be, uh -uh. that would be turned off, but really, really powerful, right. powerful stuff. Do you feel like people should have her? on like their podcasts and stuff or do you feel like she I shouldn't be getting any attention i mean honestly i feel like with how that interview went like the more attention she gets it's just gonna blow up in her face but like i don't know like i just like how is she also like not in jail i don't know i don't know 
I guess she was. But like, I don't, yeah, I don't think she should be getting interviewed. But not that I don't want to see it. Like, I do want to uh-huh. see it. But also, like, imagine how much that brings up for, what's it, Richard? Richard. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine. Yeah. Heading back to my notes. Unless you have anything else to say about um, Baby Reindeer. I feel like there was something that I just lost. Oh, the only other thing was that during the Piers Morgan thing, it was like cracking me up. How she's like, never seen the show. Not going to watch it. And then like minutes later, she'd be like, I didn't know they did that in the show. Mm-hmm, I didn't know they said mm-hmm, that in the show. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you like the whole interview, she's contradicting herself. And it was so scary how accurately she was portrayed. Yes. Like, oh, and remember on the Piers Morgan interview, she got so fixated on the accent, on the actress's accent. No, I didn't see accent. that part. She like could not let it go of like, because Piers Morgan kept being like, you she resembles you. Like you guys yeah. are like, eh, accent's a little off. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, we're not talking about the accent. We're talking about you being psycho and sending it to an email. It's like, oh, that's not quite that's Irish or shoulder. Scottish. A little bit. Yeah. Oh, pointing out the important things. Oh my God. We forgot to make the connection between you reading sexy Shrek and Andrew Scott's Quinn. Damn it. And that was a good one. That was too. such a good segue too. <clears throat> well, well, we got we, there. We need that now. Basically, Andrew Scott has a, I don't know how many episodes it is, but there is an erotica of him reading about, I actually don't know what it's about. A king, not a king. It's like, I'm not sure. Royal. It's like Royal, definitely like Royal vibes. Not sure what it's about, but it is like, it is. Yeah. Bridgerton adjacent, like sexy, explicit. Have you listened? No, I'm like kind of scared, not scared, but like, it feels it feels weird. I don't know. I can't explain it. Right, right, right. And you know, I, is... I like it's something that I would I'm I would love to listen to. Like right. I'm very right. I'm very Indulgers. I'm very um erotica positive, of course. But there's something about like starting it that's scaring me. Like pressing, like I'll like hear it. And I'll be like, woo, you know. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. Yeah. It, and yeah, I like feel like oh my oh my god. Right. Like, it feels weird. It fe- like, I don't know like almost like too intimate yeah i don't know how to explain it yeah i haven't been able to venture into it yet but i'm excited to to do that but i've obviously heard a lot on tiktok and it's like oh my god yeah it's crazy yeah i do love it though um okay i saw something on tiktok that was like what's your major and what's your minor of like your life right now so like the major thing you're focused on uh-huh. And then like your minor. So like her major was like finding a boyfriend and then minor was like something else. Oh, uh, okay. What's your major, would you say? Um I feel like my major right now is like career wise figuring out like what uh uh-huh. needs to be done. Right. Cause I just don't know. <laughs> which is so, unfortunate, yeah, uh, but completely fine. Um I think that's my major. My minor um, I don't know if maybe my minor is like something like socially, like, like how we were talking about mm-hmm. how kind of like putting ourselves in like new With different people. Yeah. New position. Yeah. New positions. New. Yeah. Uh, Switching the positions for you. you. Yeah. It's like meet new people. Yeah. I feel like, cause I love our friends and I'm always going to be hanging out with our friends, right. but I need to be good about mixing in. It's hard. Meeting new people. It's definitely hard. But that's a great, that's a great minor. What's yours? Um, I'm so, I'm so sorry to say this. What was the question? <laughs> your major and your minor. Okay. My major, it's, it's hard to talk about like wanting a boyfriend because there's a thin line between like, I don't want to be like sounding desperate online and, but also I do want to manifest it. Cause you know, Kat fully was like, oh, here's my list of traits. I want in a man like oh. two weeks later, full on boyfriend. Wow. But that's no, in the studio, know. which is like a manifestation space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's doing full boyfriend. So I don't know. Like, yes, major? I want to manifest that. Uh-huh. But also, like, I don't want to just, like, be like, I need a boyfriend. I need a boyfriend. Because I also, like, don't. Like, I'm fine yeah, by myself. Yeah. yeah but it would are. be nice. Maybe that's my minor. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's my minor. Or at least, like, putting myself into positions where that could, like, I could meet someone. Right. So like social ex-boyfriend. Right. We can hold each other accountable for our minors. It's let's do, let's question. actually switch that to major. Okay. Let's switch that to major. Okay. And minor is going to be like creative. 
stuff. So now that I have my iPad thing, the whole game's about to change. Yeah. Okay, I've got the app that Kelly told me to get, um, Good Notes, and so I'm gonna make like a journal basically uh-huh, uh-huh. and write for 15 minutes every single day. I love that. And uh, whether like that is something that comes to fruition itself or something inspires me from right. that, it's going to be maybe something that leads into a creative venture is writing. Right. I love that. We need more creative ventures. That was happening. the longest way ever to say like, it'll help me be creative. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that long. Just like the most roundabout way. But yeah, it will help you be It'll creative. Get, get those need, juices. I need more creative outlets. I also than... think like if I'm double minoring, I really need to focus on like getting my like brain back on right. Yeah, like the brain yeah. fog. Like I will listen to clips of myself, and I'll end a sentence in the middle of it, and then eighteen seconds later, finish the sentence with one word. Does that make sense? <laughs> listen, to, I, no. Listen. Actually, in the middle of that, was having a moment of like, "Whoa, oh listen, my god, I'm so high right now." Oh, okay, and that that's com- Patrick. That's perfect. Listen to this: the egg clip where me and Connor were arguing about the eggshell. Listen uh-huh. to how long it takes me to finish this one sentence. Like if you care at all. <laughs> Not yet. You are receiving a bird back? Sorry. Or you hold, it, hold, hold, hold for me. I, I, Instagram, let me fast forward. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wrong clip, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually, Completely the, wrong it was clip. actually the vestibule one. Did I post that? Oh, well, no, I, like I need to say really quick that I'm in my PJ oh my God, set. Yeah, tell everyone about your PJ set. So this is my Tommy John PJ set. Has Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, tell them about it. Tell them. Covering up. Patrick, tell them right now. <laughs> um, it's my Tommy John matching PJ set. And that's really all I have to say about it. I made him wear it because I think he looks absolutely delicious in it. That's so sweet, Brooke. Okay, here it is. Here it is, guys. Hold on one second. Okay. Hold on. I'll flag it when it happens. That's how that word is. Used. Did you hear that? That's not how that, <laughs> that word is. is. Used. And the fact that it's the word used that took me 18 right. hours to, to come grab up with. out of your mind. Yeah. That's scary. But I feel like I'm doing that too. No. Not I can't, I can't put a sentence together. That's ever. That's how that word is. <laughs> huh? Used. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, Brooke, you just did it again. Brooke, it's happening. <laughs> Do something. No, oh, man, you're good. You're all good. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I'm going to focus on my brain by going on walks. I really don't think it's the weed that contributes. Oh, God, God, no. <laughs> it wouldn't, no, no, it no. wouldn't be that. No. I swear, I because it's even when I'm I'm not smoke. You got this. You got this. You Sometimes got this. it just gets too hard. <laughs> let's move on. Um, let's talk about. There was in in there some way I was like good segue now completely lost it. Are the bases at third base being more intimate? Take it away, Patrick. <laughs> you feel a passion, Frankie. This too. No. She's eating my special dress. Oh, she's in your, <laughs> she's in your wedding dress. <laughs> that is actually, you know where I'm going to wear that dress? To the Tonys. <laughs> <laughs> is that you manifesting? That would be a perfect dress you to wear. You know where the I'm going to wear that fucking dress. Wait, th- no, this is what we need to talk about. So, I'm so sorry. Talk about what you were talking no, about. No, no. This is like how we normally talk okay. to each other. So just go for it. No, I just completely interrupted your. <laughs> your what, Brooke? Your what? <laughs> <laughs> say it. No, say it. Finish that sentence. I can't. Your train of thought. <clears throat> what were you going to say about Where's my water? the dress? Oh, the dress. Tony's. Because I'm not going for me. I'm going for you. Oh my God, for the plan. I don't know if I've, t- have I talked about me setting Patrick up with Jonathan Roth? The second Patrick came out to me, I go, 
setting up a Jonathan Groff. And it no and it no 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 no. It wasn't just like setting. It wasn't setting me up with Jonathan Groff. It was like come to Jesus moment of like oh my god, it all makes sense. It it, 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 the all the pieces came. started fitting together. Like yes, of course, my obsession with Jonathan Groff came into my life for a reason he's meant to be with patrick it all just like it literally clicked and it like i see the gears like shifting and turning together in my head it really was this like beautiful i was like god brought me to him because all of a sudden i'm like they literally would be like me as if if i have met jonathan more than once and i met him for six seconds (laughs) i wasn't i know i forgot i was like wasn't prepared for you to say more than once i was about to say i never met him because it was that quick but Yeah, my first thing was like, okay, we're setting up with Jonathan Groff. And then Tristan got really upset. And I was like, then we had to all remind ourselves, like, I actually don't know him. <laughs> right. I forgot. So it is, it's upset. okay because actually no one is right. Set no up. one's truly getting set up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he's obviously nominated, and I'd love to get uh, Patrick and him together. Wait, have the nominations came that out? That would be insane if the night he won his first Tony, you and him met. <laughs> That would be insane. Yeah. That's like a fairy tale. Oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, he's nominated. This is his third nomination. He was mm-hmm. nominated for Spring Awakening. He was not oh my mouth just started to like fill with water. Wait, has he has he not won a Tony before? Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Nominated for Spring Awakening and Hamilton. When are the Tonys? June sixteenth. I'm pretty sure, which is just two days before my birthday, so that would be an uh, awesome. A really that cool experience. Awesome. Sure, I wish get, I could experience Did we that. figure out if you can just buy tickets to the Tonys? Um, I think it's like the Oscar, you can get a seat filler. Okay, I will um, look into being a seat filler, but what? I mean, I, actually, you know what? I'm sorry, my water's spilling. I would just be so excited to watch that on TV. That's true. You know? Yeah. Because I learned at the Grammys, like. Oh, we went to the Grammys. I asked Patrick, and that's why I wasn't even going to finish that sentence because I heard <laughs> I'm it. Just fucking with no, that. I heard it. Come on. No, I forget that it, experience it in it's person. Just like you're I, just didn't, like he, not. I couldn't hear or see anything. Mm-hmm. So it's like watching it on the TV is also great. Is what I was right. going to say. Is that okay? That's completely fine. I'm just giving you shit. You know what? We I've never spoken about publicly. Huh? Sorry. Let's talk about the bases. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, what were you going to say? I don't, we'll put a pin okay. in it. Basically, me and Kelly were talking last night and then come to find out you feel the same way mm-hmm. when we were high talking about this, that sexually third base in a lot of ways is like so much more intimate than going all the way. hundred percent. I w- like so much more anxiety for that. Right. Cause there's like a, like it's a like your performance aspect yeah, to yeah there's like so much going on and it's also like harder well also like we, me and Kelly were laughing of like okay yes like not all the time should you be just like hooking up with like a stranger or someone uh-huh. the night. but it's like so insane that it's like oh your threshold's like oh we're not gonna like go all the way and hook up but I will put my well, mouth now, on your genitals but isn't that insane like oh I just met you and let mouth me mouth like, feels more intimate than genital to genital right because like when you're having sex it's like okay it's all happening like like down there right that sensation is happening not face to face with all your yes yes you know completely agreed i'm sure there's a lot more to unpack there (laughs) i just can't quite get the the thoughts and the words Uh but i completely agree that 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 right more intimate and scary yeah feels so it almost feels so much more like raunchy sexual oh, than God, yeah. actually having sex. Completely agree. Yeah. Anything else on that? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, this is what I was going to say. You know what I've never talked about? Uh, Young Gravy. You never did? Mm-mm. That was another one I was keeping close to the chest. <laughs> <laughs> I did talk about how much I loved Betty, that song. But right. um, I'm just like, this is reignited because I've been watching um, Young Gravy read Akatar on TikTok. Oh, yeah. You don't know this. <clears throat> there is a great uh, Snapchat screenshot of Brooke high 
with her big AirPod Maxes mm-hmm. on crying to Betty <laughs> by <laughs> Young Gravy. Because what had happened was, I never told them, like, he was at some party that I was and I like completely imprinted. Like I didn't even know who he was before. And like, obviously that's like insane. Cause like who would ever think that I would be interested in young gravy just like based off of literally everything about me. But I like completely imprinted on young gravy. Like tier one. Like it was like, it was no, actually in, it was too scary. May I say to the point that <laughs> when we were all like, this is insane that Young Gravy is taking Addison Ray's mom to that oh, award that show thing. and like kissing her on camera. Like it was just like an insane thing. And you were more, you were upset with him as well as defending him <laughs> saying he wasn't crazy for that. But that was like after, like that was when I got over the tier one of it all, which like is, it's so scary that Young Gravy is my only tier one that I've ever had that like, he's not even on my list anymore. Like <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck was departed. that? That was a crazy time. But I met, yeah, and we were like hanging out for a second. Like he was so sweet, and like I was just like addicted to him. And we have like some gorgeous photos in the photo booth together. They're actually still hanging on my fridge. (laughs) They are on the Um, fridge. Yeah, he's like kissing my head. I was like literally (laughs) entranced with young gravy. Completely, like it was really something for the photo books. And like I slept clutching onto those photos. Woke up with them in my palms. (laughs) <laughs> and then that's when I got my AirPod Pros and then listened to Betty literally like when I was with Life people, changed. like fully headphones on during social gatherings while I was sleeping. And that's why Betty is like all, never going to leave my top 10 Spotify. Like it is most crazy to think of a time of us like like you'll go through phases with music and everything makes sense. But that time period where it was like we got in the car and you're like, can we please listen to Young Gravy? Like. That- it was really <laughs> scary, you guys. And that was the era when he was like going on everyone's podcast. Like he had that resurgence during Betty and he was like, mm-hmm. everyone was like, oh my God, Young Gravy. Yeah, he definitely had. And the thought of like having him on BNC was like too much. Like I couldn't, <laughs> like that would have been like, I can't do that because that's how much I he couldn't be in a room. at that time. Wow. Yeah. Really, really scary to look I back did, on. I did forget like. How intense how, it was. Yeah. And like literally like my friends are so supportive of my tier one. Like they're literally like Patrick is always like entertaining everything I have to say about yeah. shit. Like he doesn't even know about it. He's just he's the best. No one could put up with Young Gravy. <laughs> <laughs> young Gravy was one step too far. Everyone was like Brooke now. <laughs> it just didn't. It did not. It, it didn't, did not add up. Right. It didn't add Something up. was off. Something was definitely. Was I don't like I literally off. and I don't know like what it was but i still love betty i heard it oh, the other yeah. day and no, it, betty like, is a great song it really brought me back um and i'd like to see him again i don't like his his diamonds in his ears he's <laughs> not doing earrings we're doing diamonds in the ear um <laughs> i don't like his diamonds <laughs> it's it's just not like it's not that i wouldn't it's not the look i would go for right right yeah not for me do as you feel young gravy but what i said do as you feel oh, God, young gravy yeah. but brooke's oh, not brooke's <laughs> yeah. not in support do whatever you want it's just not for me right. <laughs> he totally cares <laughs> but let me tell you one thing if you're trying to get her take out I, I actually really don't like guys with earrings oh really i mean obviously like a hot guy has an earring i'm like that's the hottest thing i've ever seen <laughs> but it's not like something that i gravitate yeah towards that's, that's fair I, I, like i would prefer they don't mm-hmm. i don't know how i feel about earrings actually Maybe like one, one hoop. Can be okay. Yeah, and like one hoop on a British. But it has person, to like, like fit the person. Yeah, like I love Connor Frant as hoops. Uh huh. Oh, Connor. Oh my God! Like sweet, addicted, sweet Connor. addicted to him. Okay, I wanted to go through. Um, is he? How long have we been recording? Should we just go for a two-parter? Is that fine? I don't know if I have that much can, more to talk about. But well, we can always I can see. Keep you running can keep my going. mouth. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <Just> snotting. 